I'm not like most people who take what they're given like a plastic little person. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frustrated Grad Podcast. And this is episode three of the Frustrated Wrestling Fan. I'm Zach Hughes. And here's my co host, writer, movie fan, wrestling fan, Tony Hoffman. Hey, how's it going, guys? Zach? Yo, how's your week been? It's been all right. Uh, it was full of more wrestling than I could have anticipated, but. I I think I survived. You love wrestling. There's never enough wrestling. I love slash hate wrestling. (laughs) But I guess that's what makes me a frustrated wrestling fan. Bipolar wrestling. Yeah, totally. (laughs) So, let's see. Where should we start? Uh, The biggest show that kicked off the beginning of last week for us is uh, SummerSlam, right? Yeah, SummerSlam. Yeah, the big... But four plus hour extravaganza in yeah that's Brooklyn. that's just too much to me i i i'll say it right now i did not watch all of that the, that kickoff show sorry maybe i'll see the highlights later but no i had to uh I had to just show up for the main event i mean more than the main event but the main show at least sure it was it was like the uh, tag team uh match or something that happened during the pre-show that which i also didn't see but yeah there was a big tag team match where i guess uh the usos vault villains and hype bros were on one team and the american alpha breezango and the ascension uh i guess we're on the other side i don't know i didn't see it but i hear it sounds like it was good (laughs) the big multi-man tag matches are usually good on those shows uh the funny thing to me is that this thing they made a big deal of on Raw, Sheamus and uh, Cesaro having a best of seven series that was going to start at SummerSlam. It was pushed to the pre-show. <laughs> so they're already <laughs> establishing that it doesn't matter. And it's just to fill time. No, no. Even that, that's just them admitting that, that it doesn't matter and that nobody cares. That yeah, so it's like. They had it before them. Like, okay, match number two will happen whenever. <laughs> the whole series could be over for all we know. And we've never seen one match. Um, so, yeah, Sheamus won the first one. Whatever. And, you know, they're just I'll take your word back and forth. <laughs> uh sammy Zayn and neville defeated the dudley boys and uh, whatever okay so uh yeah, dudley boys uh pretty much their last uh significant match I, or they're probably their last match maybe i have a an opinion on that when we get to raw um okay so <laughs> uh the show starts out i believe with natalia alexa bliss and the returning nikki bella versus which everyone uh, knew it was gonna yeah everybody happen. knew it was gonna happen even though she was on the she was on the bad guy team she got the biggest ovation of the match that's um, like th- that's such a like a like a whitewashing of like how everybody felt about her like before she got injured and stuff because yeah. she pretty, pretty much hated her and now she's yeah. back from this injury now not everybody likes her you know that's the thing that happens when you come back from an injury you're like showing that real life overcoming adversity it usually turns people baby face yeah i, I applaud her for that yeah, yeah i was i was happy that she, she came back nice and healthy her you know career was kind of in jeopardy a little bit there and she worked hard and got back so yeah. i'm good to have her i'm good she's back yeah so their team beat uh carmella becky lynch and naomi so that match was what it was show starter curtain jerker as they say her neck is good yeah so uh after that was i don't know if these were in order but charlotte and uh sasha banks fought for the women's championship and charlotte won surprisingly enough yeah Uh, i wasn't expecting that i i think that we were we most like everybody else uh, thought that sasha was gonna uh, win to you know keep you know her keep the belt the women's uh title belt but uh yeah. like i think like right before i think it might have been right before SummerSlam. like word had got out that sasha had been removed from the schedule the, yeah uh, the wwe schedule for like the next month and people yeah. were assuming oh she's about to get suspended yeah because there have been so many stuff. suspensions like oh is there just another one to add to the list <laughs> but apparently it's for uh recovering from injuries right 
yeah like a little little nagging stuff to give her some time to to recover so uh yeah so yeah charlotte has the the belt back um you know, it, it was mentioned on uh, what on Raw the next day that uh, when Sasha comes back, she's going to have a chance to. It's going to be a rematch to to get the belt back. So yeah, so <laughs> so that was uh, that match. Uh, next was Gallows and Anderson. Uh, they they technically beat the New Day by disqualification. It was pretty much a no contest. Uh, this they didn't match, have yeah. Biggie. Yeah, they didn't have Big E, and then uh, the fight really gets out of hand, and Big E comes out uh, for the save, and everybody's happy he was finally back. So that one's basically no contest. Uh, The Miz and Apollo Crews um, fought for the IC championship. I don't remember this match much at all. I I don't either. In and out, but Miz won. Obviously, I didn't expect Apollo Cruz to uh, win this one because I think Miz because he's is boring as fuck. Yeah, Miz is uh, on a roll right now, and we'll talk about that when we get to SmackDown. But I'm glad he held on to it. I am. Um, Jericho. Um, be Enzo and Cass in a decision I don't understand because Enzo and Cass I would assume are like top contenders for the tag championship mm. and they're I, I don't more know why they're losing more right entertaining. now yeah so I don't understand why they're losing right now and I don't even understand why uh, Kevin Owens is being wasted in this tag team right now but he Whatever. seems. I would like to see him solo. I would like to see him be a contender for, uh, you know, for, for the for the heavyweight title. Yeah, and we're gonna see him fight for the title coming up was next uh, week. So uh, hopefully they decide to go a different way with that team. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ruth, I, I just like I just like how unconventional he is. Yeah, like, like physic physically as a wrestler. Totally. Yeah. So uh, Rusev and Roman Reigns fought for the. IC championship it never happened it basically was no contest also kind of trying to get uh Roman Reigns over as his badass so it's basically just beat up Rusev match didn't even start I was like I, I was reading something uh somebody that I follow on Twitter uh like do you think that like Rusev like he has too much of a baby face to be like a heel like they are they're, they're obviously Absolutely. always trying to I mean, yeah, cause I, I don't buy him as being. Like I a think, <laughs> I think in front of a crowd, like when he's doing his promo, it, he gets over as a heel because he's he's good at doing that anti-American, anti-American act. So they'll they'll get into the USA chance or whatever. But like his like his character outside of that and all the stuff that went on like with Lana and when he was with Summer Rae for that brief period of time. Yeah, I think yeah. that really got him over as a face. Like He's too they, nice of a guy. <laughs> they, re- they realized how funny he was. So I think that was that worked against his heel persona because I don't think anybody was really like, yeah, Roman, I want you to beat him. So this was kind of just a uh, time waster. Um, uh, the next match was probably the first one on the whole show that I was like, anticipating um was aj styles versus john cena yeah even though we've seen it before but uh aj won with with not so clean a finish the first time i'm glad that they got like a longer match they got to do more a lot of people don't like like the finisher kickouts and make the finishers look weak but i thought they did a good balance of that i liked how like uh Cena just felt like he couldn't put him away you could see the like uh expression on his face every time he would kick out yeah so i thought that was cool and i like that yeah. AJ got a good clean win over him yeah. and uh John Cena is now a part-time wrestler he's yeah. got uh, other commitments now and uh, yeah, yeah he's going to go film American Grit on Fox <laughs> American because Grit. It, was, it was such a smash hit the first yeah. season yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, time for new blood yeah totally um next was dean ambrose versus dolph ziggler this one this was the this is like the i would say like the only one i saw from start to finish really so that one for me it was one that i wasn't really anticipating i knew it was going to be a good match but just like with the build-up and them trying to make ziggler look credible it was like i know that how this is going to end i can (laughs) see this from a mile away so just to get it over with 
But for that one, I think it was interesting because usually the way uh, matches go in WWE is that when they, because these are pretty much a, uh, two baby faces facing each other. But usually, like whoever's taking the more heel stance, if they're like getting extra cocky about it and extra confident, then they're going to lose. But it was interesting that Dean Ambrose basically was mocking Ziggler the entire match. <laughs> And he just put him away and won clean. <laughs> so it was funny. Like it feels like a legit burial of Ziggler, but I'm sure he's gonna be doing. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna be doing something else. But I'm, I mean, he got another opportunity, you know, on Raw, which we're gonna talk about. But you know, oh, yeah, it's SmackDown actually. Yeah, on, you know, yeah, on top SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, so it's it, be. I don't know what's gonna happen now. I don't know, and and also we talked about this before we started recording. But th- okay, we saw this commercial. I think it was before this match, um, but there was this commercial for KFC, <laughs> and I really didn't know what I was watching when it it came on the screen. Like, okay, so there's Dolph Ziggler dressed as Colonel Sanders. Big muscly, uh, yeah, Colonel Sanders. Muscly red Colonel Sanders. He obviously uh, doesn't eat KFC. Yeah, he's taking on the Miz, who's dressed as a chicken. So, um, so San Diego chicken esque. Yeah, so basically like a takeoff of the chicken fight from Family Guy, but in a wrestling ring, all uh, to promote KFC chicken, and I. I didn't know what I was seeing. I was like, this guy, you want to be believed as a top contender for your main championship <laughs> is in a commercial dressed as Colonel Sanders and another guy who's trying to get over as a serious heel and as a top guy on SmackDown with the Intercontinental Championship is dressed as a chicken. <laughs> so <laughs> just really didn't know why this existed and like what was the upside of it? I guess money is yes, as uh, usual that's exactly is the, the upside. upside. Yeah. Product but, placement, uh KFC. You know, I I assume that the large portion of the WWE fandom uh, eats there. Certainly yeah. not the wrestlers. Yeah, there was I'm sure there were some greasy fingers turning up the volume uh, at this <laughs> at this period of time when this coleslaw and mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah. Feel good. Yeah, so I guess, and apparently this isn't the end of this thing. There's oh, it's an ongoing. Yeah, from what series. I heard, they like like at the next pay per views there will be more of these little uh, vignettes, and I I can't wait. Ah, you're a yeah. sponsor. Yeah. Are you more of a Popeyes guy or a, you know? I never really liked any Chick Fil A. I never really liked any of the mainstream chicken places. I was always more of a Harold's person, because like a Harold's, a Harold's yeah. man. But that's the thing is like I used to love KFC as a kid, because it was sure. right it was right around the corner from me, and I could walk there. Like I I, I was one of those kids Mine who was like saved a couple them. of blocks. Yeah, I was one of those kids who saved up my allowance, so I would just buy whatever I wanted when I wanted. So like on Friday nights, I would go and get like the 20 piece box of 20 piece box yes obviously. for myself uh, <laughs> 20 piece box of were you o- o- morbidly obese like? <laughs> no they were actually the little but they were like the honey barbecue wings so they were the like boneless ones no they were i think most of the time i got the ones with bones but they were okay. like so sauced up and extra sticky and i just mm. loved them so i would get 20 of those and i would get one of their little uh i don't know if they have individual sides uh, no, I would get one of those little chocolate cakes with the white oh, frosting, yeah. <laughs> and I would eat, <laughs> I would eat all the wings, and I would eat that entire cake by myself. Big chunk of sugar. Basically. Yeah, and it was usually while I was watching Snick on Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> Roundhouse. It was, it was like my routine. I would watch like Are You Afraid that. of the Dark, and all that, and Goosebumps or whatever. Oh, those were the days. Yeah. So. 
like I love KFC, but then that ended up being like the first place I ever worked at that exact KFC. Oh yeah, I, I, I can relate to how so, you end up working at a place that you like, and then that t- totally changes your uh, opinion yeah. on it. So yeah. then you you learn how the sausage is made, and you don't, yeah, exactly go behind the curtain. <laughs> you don't want sausage ever again. Actually, the weird thing is that I didn't learn anything that was really discouraging about the chicken. Like I would still eat. KFC chicken. I just had an aversion to the place. Like I didn't like the memories I had going into the no. building. But Asshole manager. Yeah. Stupid employee. It was weird. The manager was like a family friend, but then it was like, no, you're no friend of mine. <laughs> this is like <laughs> I, I, I quit on him after six months. I was like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Tired of washing these dishes. Take this drumstick and shove it. Yeah. So like the the one bad thing I learned and hopefully this doesn't get me sued but uh, <laughs> I will say at this particular uh, <laughs> branch and I'm not even gonna say the name anymore because you know where I'm talking about, but at this particular branch when they made the pot pies it was basically they made the pot pies at the end of the day and they just tore up the chicken that didn't sell that day by hand and then they made the pot pies for the next Ooh. day so i'm like i was i'm not a pot pie person neither am i i've never had but this. i was like oh never i'm wanted. i'm never gonna get that, <laughs> that pot pie from that franchise but anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> on that note yeah so you go to the next uh, yes. match at SummerSlam. So what do we have? <laughs> next was uh, Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. I, yeah, uh, once again, uh, Mr. Rollins uh, injures a uh, yeah. another wrestler. He's, he's it, gaining a bit of a reputation. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad look. It was like I feel it bad. Is. I feel bad for both guys actually. Like yeah. Finn Balor, he wins his first major championship. It was like a huge. Um, Move. Just got drafted about like what over yeah. a month ago. <laughs> like he's in, he was in the middle of a ginormous push, maybe one of the biggest of any debuting wrestler in WWE. Yeah, history. I was trying to like remember, like who would you compare it to? Like Cena? Would the Cena yeah. have to like? The, I mean, really, this isn't a move they pull in WWE that often. I would think of like way back to like in WCW where like the. Big Show, as we know him now, the Giant fought Hulk Hogan in his first match and won the world title. Like that's how far back I had to go to be like somebody in kind of their debut. He won obviously a qualifying match, but this is like his first pay per view match on the main roster. He wins the like the title that's supposed to be the major title on Raw. It was like a huge deal. So. It's it's really unfortunate that he got injured in that same match. And, and you look at like how he got injured, like you know he pretty much got picked up by Rollins and he threw him up, up against the barrier. Yeah, it's just like a running power his, bomb. Yeah, that he usually does his in the shoulder corner. Funny. Yeah, it looks like he like it's it's a hard move to take, I'm sure, because like you're getting thrown in the air, and I guess he was. He didn't exactly know where he was, so he probably put his arm back too far to stop himself. Um, but he popped his shoulder out of his socket. And I like how they talked about it on commentary the next night. Like, they did a, a replay of it. It was like, if you notice right here, he pops his shoulder back into place. Like, they still wanted to make sure you knew that this guy was a badass, that he popped his shoulder back into place and finished the match. Yeah. So. Uh- and that was a nice thing that they spotlighted on the commentary the next night. But he finished the match. They had they went on to have a great match. You wouldn't be able to tell from watching the no. match. I don't think that his uh, shoulder was messed up. Apparently he found out more later that it started hurting more. Yeah, he had his arm in the sling on Raw the next night. Yeah. Um, so, so we know he wins the match. So I like that match. I just wish that it... <laughs> what happened didn't happen during it and another match uh where i regret what happened <laughs> uh during the course of the match was the following one brock lesnar <laughs> versus randy orton so i thought this match so, was yeah. I, I i wasn't excited about the wrestling in this match because um like we were talking about before the show i feel like i've turned a corner on Brock Lesnar as far as how I feel about his wrestling ability 
because people are excited for Brock Lesnar matches, but not in the same way they're excited for like an AJ Styles match or a John Cena no, match. You're not gonna watch any like cool moves or any like good yeah you know technique or anything because we know the formula basically has been put in place from that uh john cena match at a couple summer slams ago where he just basically suplexed john cena the entire match and then f5 him. that is now the formula for a brock lesnar match it, it's a freak show basically. yeah it's so a so that's show. what people were anticipating and another thing people are anticipating is like okay they're making randy orton look like a big deal so from podcasts i heard uh, a lot of people were looking forward to uh, the spot where Randy Orton hits the RKO out of nowhere. And the, the one of the obvious ones was that he would reverse the F5 into an RKO mid-move. And I was like, okay, if I see that move, then I'll be satisfied. We did not get that move. What we no. got, what we got was uh, a little bit of back and forth. They went to the outside. He gets the RKO on the out on. The, uh, on the announce table comes in ddt's him uh with for a good near fall it's another rko and then um the unthinkable happens uh brock is pretty much on top of him pounding and then i guess they decided as far as the bookers were concerned it was like let's just have brock go into ufc mode in this match although exactly. although uh elbows i believe are illegal but he just it's grinding on him he's pounding him i think he takes his gloves off and then he just starts elbowing orton in the head and he's busted open and uh i like what uh mauro ranallo said on commentary that he like it looks like a horror movie <laughs> like because there's just this, pool of blood. this huge pool of blood like right next to orton's head and you could just see the stream constantly coming down so the I think it was interesting how they played it out because we find out later that it was planned because it totally didn't look like something you would like intentionally set out to do if you no. were like if you're Orton like agreeing to this. Yeah, exactly. So, it's like please not you know like crack anything my head but open that like put my life in danger yeah, possibly because like these guys get fined for blading as they say like when they actually hide a razor blade and cut themselves. But like to do it hard way, as they say, it, like really legitimately busting someone's head open. I don't know why anybody would sign up for that. No, so, not enough money. Yeah, so uh, it that was happens. it was so real that you know Chris Jericho, you know. Yeah, and that was an interesting bit <laughs> of news from this week. Uh, like after the match, Jericho gets in Brock's face. Well, I think originally he comes up to. Um, Michael Hayes, who was he's kind of the booker, he kind of outlines the matches with the guys. He asked him like, "Was this planned? Was this a work?" As they say in the business, and he, I yeah. guess he just doesn't tell him. He doesn't respond yeah. at all. So then he goes he, up to Brock because I guess at this point he believed Brock went into business for himself, was being reckless. Uh, and they have Jericho is a is a um, a leader, a locker room leader, a guy who definitely yeah. uh, so that, respects yeah, so wrestling. That's, that's something I didn't necessarily know, but that's an, a nice bit of uh, inside information because you, normally you, uh, you when you hear stuff about the type of politics in the locker room, you will hear about John Cena. like He's like the locker room leader. Now that he's not yeah. on the main show anymore, it's nice to see that there's still somebody in that position. So Jericho basically standing up for the boys and trying to see like, like, what what's the deal? Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. So he gets in Lesnar's face, and I guess they they have a little bit of a tense moment. Brock blows a kiss at him. I guess it seems like there's conflicting reports. Like either he blows a kiss at him or he kisses him on his forehead directly. But he's. Uh, <laughs> Jericho says something along the lines of "Kiss me or hit me, bitch." So I, I just thought that was interesting. It sounds like Vince eventually broke it up. He yeah, said, yeah. "It's like, don't you understand? This is fake." <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty much what he said to him. It's like it's a work. So it finally gets cleared up. But I don't like the fact that they were like just withholding this because it's like, why do you need to hide it from? Uh, yeah, exactly. The wrestlers they should know what's going on on their show. Um, 
so it got a little heated but that was an interesting story that we learned from SummerSlam it was a decent amount of news coming out of SummerSlam and most of it not very good but exactly that was the most interesting piece of news um the next show uh we watched this week was was it Monday Night Raw Monday Night Raw like we do every week uh, yeah. for better or for worse like we do it this time <laughs> so Raw is such a long show. show. Much, it's like, yeah, I know. Just, oh, God. So we, we yeah. obviously they had to start off with the whole recap of a of a SummerSlam. We get an update. Yeah. From a Finn Balor. Yeah. So we find out shoulder thing. Yeah, we find out about what actually happened to his shoulder. I didn't see any like I wasn't watching the wrestling news that day, so I only found out when I started watching Raw, and I was like shocked. So Balor has to relinquish his title due to injury. He only had it for less than twenty four hours. Or... Yeah, this. Yeah, it's just so sad because it was. I felt really excited about the prospect of what was going to happen, and it's like, okay, they're new really, blood, man. Yeah, they're really pushing this guy. It's going to be exciting because uh, when going into the match, it was like, n- there's no way they can have Seth Rollins win. This is supposed to be a new era. We should have a new champion. It's going to be exciting. And then, sadly, that's that's cut short, and we're back to reality. Yeah. So, I wonder who's going to get that push now. With him, well, he—I think he's what is he after like six? Is this six months or is it less than that? I believe it's I six for, months. Oh God! So that's that's no boy. That no. sucks. Yeah. yeah. So that's not a good look, but that's where we are as far as Balor. He had to relinquish the championship, and now there's uh basically they set up a fatal four way championship match for next Monday. Um, so. That is uh, how they start out the show. The first match in that tournament was actually Neville versus Kevin Owens. And that match, uh, you could just tell by the marquee on that, that Kevin Owens was obviously going to advance. Um, after that was um, Big E versus Carl Anderson. Big E's in-ring return. He wins that one. Uh, next was an unfortunate segment, I feel. Um, <laughs> Titus O'Neil came out uh, to cut a promo. And he was stumbling and fumbling over every word. And this really felt bad for him. Because like Titus O'Neil was on one of those uh, trajectories that he was heading towards uh possible main event status or at least high mid card status and now it just seems like he's he's in limbo and he's was put out here for this promo and I don't think this is gonna help his stock any. His mic work is uh, yeah, lacking. It, yeah, <laughs> it it was definitely lacking. It was it's just like really unfortunate. And that's one of the things that's a problem with scripting uh guys promos because it doesn't feel natural coming from them and they don't feel natural delivering it. And he obviously didn't uh, really feel attached to the script that he was given. Yeah. So, so he's basically, he was basically out there stumbling through crap about um, calling out about, Darren Young yeah, and Darren Bob Young. Backlund. How do you make him great? Make him great again. When he never was never great, to, great. <laughs> in the first place. Yeah, yeah it's like okay, we've heard this before, and it's uh, just like a, a a much worse version of it. So I think Bob Backlund comes out first. He he gets some good offense on uh, Titus, and then uh, Titus turns it around, and then Darian Young comes out to basically break it up. Um, after this, we had uh, Big Cass versus Rusev is another uh, kind of tournament style match for this four way championship match. Big Cass. Did you know wins. that Rusev uh, got hurt a, a little bit, or like his ribs or something? Really? At a summer slam. Oh yeah, because yeah. he had the tape on him. Yeah. So I did. I didn't realize that until they showed him coming out. So I guess something happened in in the brawl with. Um, Roman Roman. Reigns, because it was like there wasn't a match, but so I guess it (laughs) was whenever he took that spear on the ramp, I guess he went a little stiff. But so Cass uh, beats Rusev via count out. 
so yeah, he whatever. Had to stepped out of the ring and left with the uh, with the uh, Lana. Yeah, so he basically gives away his, his shot at a, a universal championship match, which doesn't really make sense. I understand like the idea of the cowardly heel, but when he has so much to gain. I guess he already has a championship, so maybe he's just uh, staying alive to fight another yeah. day, I guess. But I I don't know why Big Cass is in this position, because it seems like basically just everybody who came out and interrupted Stephanie when she was talking got a chance at the title. <laughs> it's like, like, where why? was Heath Slater? When you yeah, exactly, them? because it's like, why would Enzo, like Enzo and Cass came out during that opening segment? It was like, like Enzo, like neither one of these guys should be contingent for the main world championship, so to speak. No. But they just came out just because every, that's what people were doing, and I guess it worked okay. out for him. I don't know why Enzo didn't end up getting a match because he was there too. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, let's pick the bigger one. All right, sure. so um, we got a debut that people were anticipating i was anticipating and uh finally yeah <laughs> i guess this is what they were waiting for because uh we didn't mention it before but just like SummerSlam and for nxt takeover they were in uh brooklyn at the barclay center again for the third sasha straight be- night with sasha being gone this is yeah this is the perfect opportunity yeah it was a perfect opportunity and a perfect place because it seems like the the thing now like the night after wrestlemania and the night after SummerSlam, where you have these big excited crowds the most uh rowdy crowds you'll get all year they debut the nxt people because they're the people that are most likely to recognize them so it was a uh, it was a good ovation and reception for bailey one thing i don't understand is why mcfoley had to announce her i feel like he didn't need to be there i feel like they just could have had dana brooke come out and then all of a sudden you hear bailey's music hit yeah so you could just have a natural uh screaming reaction from the fans because he kind of telegraphed it like it was uh, yeah it's too much lead up too much like 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 i signed a new star she's she's very exciting and from nxt here's bailey and like, everybody, everybody had their signs and stuff out. Yeah, like, everybody her, knew. Knew, yeah. yeah. Her shtick. I guess. I guess the only reason, and I've heard this from other podcasts, that I guess she needed to have someone to hug when she came out because <laughs> she's a hugger. So I guess Mick yeah. Foley needed to be there for that. Although Mick Foley is getting a kind of a weird reputation as being like a creepy dude. Really? <laughs> as far as like, it, he's been like, I, and. I feel like it's, I mean his daughter's it's, hot. I'd, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lot, uh, people are obsessed with his daughter, but I I feel like this is kind of an unfair thing. But he's been like an outspoken advocate for women's wrestling, but people have kind of turned that to be like he's a creeper <laughs> because even going way back to uh, Melina when she was in the company, he was like a real advocate for her as far as her wrestling career. Getting See, started. why can't he just be a, you know, he's, he's an advocate for, for women's wrestling. Why does he have to, why do people have to assume that yeah, cause you know, like, because he's a big hairy guy? You know? Yeah, because like Triple H is a big part of why the women's wrestling in NXT Definitely. is, is it has gotten so good and they're so focused on the wrestling, but they don't focus on him like, oh yeah, he's probably <laughs> creeping on those girls. Like, no, he's just helping them out and wants them to get <laughs> by. But he's I don't a know. smart businessman. Yeah, but it's a it's a weird thing that's it's really taken off as far as how people look at that. Even I watched the debut episode of Holy Foley, his reality <laughs> show. Oh, first four episodes on demand. Yeah, I think five actually. But oh. I watched the first one because uh, it came on after SummerSlam, and I think. Uh, they even mentioned it on there because he was wearing a Sasha Banks t-shirt in, at home and his kids were like, hey, dad, you look really creepy wearing that shirt. <laughs> it's like, okay, I kind of get that. Like, wearing the merch is kind of, I uh, wear a, a shirt that says legit boss in pink. But either way. So He's Bailey, a fan. 
Yeah, so Bailey comes out. She beats Dana Brooke in her first match. So it's a good, uh, nice way to debut her. So she's obviously going to probably be going for that uh, that women's championship. Um, next, we have our jobber match with Braun Strowman. And what was the name of that guy again? The, the, uh, the everybody's name, making fun of him. The guy's name was said. Johnny Knockout. <laughs> like... The, like as far as the names for these jobbers i'm sure they make them all, all up the day of but this was like the worst <laughs> laziest <laughs> one johnny knockout this seems like w- a nickname you would call somebody like john cena it's not yeah, like not a, bravo it's not like a name that's supposed to stick but uh, this guy what is it what 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 is uh, the type of men that uh yeah so he cuts his <laughs> his standard promo before the match uh, with Byron Saxton he's like why did you take this match it was like it's because I like big sweaty men <laughs> <laughs> and it's like okay like you think that's kind of like homophobic or or what like what <laughs> why <laughs> I think this is the idea of being inclusive through the lens of crazy ass 70 plus year old vince mcmahon it's like because because we heard something about this i think i don't know if it was on twitter or whatever but stephanie mcmahon said previously that they're going to start introducing more lgbt characters in wwe programming and for some people that might be like oh that's good and that's progressive but coming from the same person as stephanie mcmahon who said that darren young who is a gay person in real life openly gay yes he said his character is not gay yet <laughs> like yet <laughs> and like yet. what why like why does he have to turn gay like you turn heel <laughs> it's like what is he just gonna be in the middle of a match and just start making out with his opponent like how does his character become gay like we don't see these people have sex on screen because it's not the attitude era right? <laughs> But Jesus. that was just weird, and you see how they're kind of backwards in their thing. So this is this is one of the LGBT characters that they're yeah. debuting here. Yeah, he this likes big sweaty men. Yeah, and it kind of gives new uh, meaning to the word jobber. But <laughs> moving on, uh, so Strowman beats him easily. Yeah, I like what um, Corey Graves said after this because when the match started, he's like. It's too bad this guy likes sweaty men because Braun Strowman is going to beat him without breaking a sweat. I was like, that was a, <laughs> that was a nice way to recover from that. <laughs> it was like, it brought me right back into the show. I was like, okay, that was that was nice. Oh, okay. That might be my line of the week. Um, So that was a quick match. Next is uh, the, the Dudley retirement Boys. Yeah. Of the, the quote-unquote retirement of the Dudley Boys. Yeah, so I thought, like, the, and it's weird the timing of this and what they were doing in as far as their storyline leading up to this because it totally made me expect something different because uh, we've seen this kind of retirement set up before and it made me immediately think of mark henry um mark henry came out uh it was it's been a couple years ago at this point he came out he was wearing a salmon colored uh blazer and he gave this long speech basically like talking about all his experience and what uh the long road the fans. he's gone through with the fans and it seemed like he was going to retire and then john cena comes out to kind of congratulate him on a hard-fought career and he basically turns and it was all a fake out and it was to beat up john cena and get a title <laughs> shot which is nice yeah and it was like one of the best like retirement segments i've ever seen i was like oh my god that was that was epic and i felt like this was leading on that same road because i was thinking like okay um bubble ray and devon leading up to this point were they were like teasing uh dissension between their tag team they kept having like miscommunication between matches and Devon would accidentally knock Bubba Ray off the apron or whatever. So it seemed like they were leading to a breakup. So when they were doing this retirement speech, I kept waiting for the moment like, okay, Devon's going to turn around and Bubba Ray's going to attack him. Because like anybody who saw Bubba Ray in TNA was waiting for him to do his character of Bully Ray in WWE because it was like, it was him as a single competitor and he was doing his best promo work and he was 
he was really stepping up his in-ring game but then he comes back and like reverts to this old character from like the early 2000s when he comes back to wwe so i thought the turn was gonna happen it didn't happen no. then the shining stars come out a primo <laughs> and epico like of all the teams to come out why would you have these guys come out but we see it's so just, they could get their ass kicked. yeah this is basically just for them to be fodder for uh the dudleys to hit the 3d on them but then another yeah, team but then comes we get a out twist. yeah the club comes out and they actually beat them down the, and put them the through guys. the table yeah, yeah. so it the way some people were talking about it it was like it was a passing of the torch and this was a way for the Dudleys to go out and put another team over but I feel like why would they leave when they just got beat up by these guys don't they want to get their payback so I feel like maybe they're leaving but I don't feel like they're leaving until after they like finish this thing with the club because that seems like kind of anticlimactic like, do you want that to be your last moment on t- screen? I'm thinking of it, I guess, from the perspective of the Dudleys, because it doesn't make sense. Like, to just be like, okay, that was their last uh, appearance. They got destroyed. No, but that's like the that's like the harsh reality of wrestling in life, Zach. You know, you can't you know, get older, and you know, you can't stay on top, you know, forever. And I guess, know. but the thing is that they <laughs> were talking about going out on their own terms. And then they get beat up. So it's like, okay, this wasn't our terms. We we scheduled to come out and cut a promo and leave, and then we got beat up. So we that like that was counter to what they were talking about. So, but maybe we won't see them again. But I feel like there's gonna be at least one more match. But who knows? Maybe it's over after this. Um, next was uh, the last match of the night, I believe. It was Roman Reigns versus Chris Jericho for that last spot in the Fatal 4-Way Universal Championship match. And it was weird because they were teasing this going a different way when they were uh, Jericho were doing the interview because they were saying that how they might possibly be in this match together and they'll have to fight each other. So you would think that they were going to play up that tension because Kevin Owens obviously qualified and you would think Jericho has his match to qualify so they could play out that story. But they decided to go a different way with it and Roman Reigns wins, which nice. nobody it makes me happy. <laughs> I think it's it's good that it Reigns is in this match. He's back in the kind of title contention spot, but I don't I don't know. Like it, it makes me feel kind of worried about the outcome of this four-way match because he was—he's obviously the guy you would expect to win it, but I don't think fans are going to be excited about that because we would. I up, like him as a heel. As I like far Roman Reigns as Roman Roman Reigns as a heel. Yeah, but I don't feel like they're really trying to go that way with him. He is a heel with the fans because they don't like him, but I don't know if that's the role he's actually trying to play or the role that they want him to play. That, that's the role that he should be. <laughs> he should be playing that definitely because yeah. people hate him, but I feel like they're going to keep trying the same thing and have him try to do wacky comedy and it's just not going to go dumb. over well. Plus, it's like they went with this like how this the life of this championship started like new championship uh new uh person we are not familiar with won the title we got new blood and then they're gonna rewind and possibly go back to roman reigns i feel like that's people are gonna feel like that's a step in the wrong direction i feel like now the top contender for it would be like kevin owens in my opinion because nobody wants to see big Cass as a champion (laughs) <laughs> and yeah so that's but he's so big he's so big and you can't teach that but yeah no no he's he's not the guy we've been looking for so um yeah so that's it for that match and that's like raw. yeah so i want to go back a little bit before we get to smackdown the debut of that because there's some more titles being debuted but the debut of that universal championship during SummerSlam okay. that was probably one of like the worst reactions to any 
debut you uh, ever. don't like the color of the universal i i was okay on it but like I someone saw, spilled uh, some uh put some red paint on the women's championship belt yeah, i heard someone basically <laughs> or i've heard so many takes on twitter about it like it looks like a f- fiery doritos championship or <laughs> or a bacon belt because it it does kind of look like bacon and i think the worst part about it is like when you look at the replica on if you look at uh wwe shop it the replica looks fine um it just looks like a red belt but it's like the real life belt the part that looks the worst on it is the background because it's so like bumpy and textured (laughs) It, it just looks gross so I feel like if that was just a smooth background, you couldn't see any texture on it, and it was like all red and like consistent throughout, it would have looked better. But it just looks like a lumpy piece of bacon behind the WWE logo. Um, so going from that belt that debuted at the beginning of the week, basically into SmackDown, where they debut two new championships for, I mean, three belts in total. They debut the SmackDown Women's Championship, which I like. It's it's basically yeah. just a blue version of the of the red Raw Women's Championship belt. Yeah, well, really, because it's all blue. It looks. I mean, well, because it's the white strap and the blue logo. It looks. It it's kind of looks more prestigious to me. The uh, women's belts look better than the men's belts. Yeah, the the yeah, it looks better than the the World Heavyweight Championships. Um, so. I like that belt a lot. I feel like if I had a option to buy a belt besides like the main uh, WWE World Championship that Dean Ambrose has, like that women's belt looks more appealing to me than yeah. blue is my favorite men's. color too. Yeah, totally. For me, I was like, oh, I want that belt. It's like, can yeah. you change the word from women? <laughs> like, I guess yeah. I could be a champion of women if I want. Hey, to. Hey, <laughs> he he Slater, you know? Yeah, he, he tried. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> and then they debuted. Uh, the tag championships, which I feel like... They're very generic. Yeah, I feel like this <laughs> twist on the penny belts, as people call them, from uh, the Raw show, like the the Raw belts look like two pennies, and these look like two dimes. Um, but I feel like these look better. I like. I always think that silver uh, looks more prestigious uh, than, than the copper-colored belts they have, because it's like, so what do you like, the third best... <laughs> if you're a tag champ so the having the silver belts it looks better than um the copper penny belts but it's still not the ideal design um but it's a step up from where they were at least i don't know how i feel about the blue strap on it it's it's okay i guess it's smackdown yeah color <laughs> yeah so i guess this gives me more hope since like when they were announcing them, they said SmackDown Women's Championship and SmackDown Tag Team Championship. So I feel like these are going to be officially SmackDown property. So hopefully yeah. they never go into uh, the place where they combine shows and have someone holding both championships on Raw or whatever. Hopefully, like if you go over to Raw, that you have to relinquish the championship. Hopefully, that's the route they go. Um, with that two separate brands two yeah. separate shows legit separate brands that's what I'm hoping for and yeah so that's how Smackdown started out what was the next thing on Smackdown um, let me see I think after uh, that it was was it the Bella why well, I think it was, actually, it was Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch think, versus right? Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she <laughs> beats Alexa Bliss. That is, uh, it was a pretty short match, I think. Um, the Uso. Naomi and um, and uh, and Natalia doing commentary. I remember. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like uh, Natalia was doing her thing on commentary, and she was getting her lines out or whatever. But I just felt like Naomi was like really soft spoken during that segment. Exactly, I, I did like... too. I, I just, I, I, I just miss somebody like AJ Lee, who was who was always so good at doing that stuff, and who, who was yeah. always so good at like, you know, 
being in character and being on the mic and everything. They were, they were just so boring. Yeah, because I feel like that was one thing. That's one thing that has improved with the women's division is the the in ring work and the wrestling. But I feel like there still needs to be some time taken out for mic work and promos. I feel like that's one thing that's still um, missing a little bit. Um, Definitely. Next is the Usos versus. Uh, they defeated the ascension because i guess they're having a tournament for the smackdown tag team championship so you know the ascension yeah not, not, was not going to be in that belts picture. Are out and yeah, yeah. yeah everyone's trying to get those titles now everyone's serious about yeah so you know the ascension was not going to be uh in contention for that at all fuck no, no. yeah <laughs> yeah um uh, so daniel bryan makes a match between aj and dolph ziggler and this is basically uh as a result of, I think there was the first segment of the show where AJ, AJ's bragging about yeah he brags the, about defeating a Cena yeah and he's kind of trying to take over as the locker room leader I guess and, and, and Dolph is there and he's upset yeah because uh, yeah AJ mentioned something about him losing to Ambrose and yeah. Dolph gets in his face and, uh, yeah so and now they have a beef and, yeah. yeah so they make the match for uh, backlash and it's weird the stipulation was weird because it was like the basic gist of it was that AJ has the title shot no matter what but if Ziggler beats AJ he gets in that match as a triple threat so it's like AJ really didn't have anything to lose didn't have to lose exactly <laughs> it was like I, he wins either way yeah so it was like I would have just walked out and let, let it be a count out because like I get my match anyway so who cares but I guess why even break a sweat yes but I guess to make sure he has a one on one shot that's what this match is for uh, next is uh, Nikki Bella comes out for her return and something well, a move interview I, with uh with the Renee. Yeah, she has an interview with Renee. And a move that I think was uh well overdue <laughs> and something that I appreciate <laughs> them doing was that Carmella turns out and basically they pull off a double turn here. Like Nikki was technically on paper supposed to be a heel, although everybody was happy that she was back. And Carmella is supposed to be a baby face, but she comes out, beats up Nikki. They pull off the double turn. Now Carmella is officially a heel, which I feel like is much better yeah, for her. Because, something interesting. <laughs> yeah, plus like her whole routine and her whole gimmick is such a heel gimmick. Like just coming out and how annoying she is on the mic. Like, okay, this makes more sense for her to yes, be a heel. It fits more. It, it definitely everything that she does, like her whole thing, it, it definitely fits more. And you know, I, I it's gonna be fun to sort of, you know, hate her. Yeah, because <laughs> they want you to hate her. Because the funny thing is, like, she's just doing the same thing as Enzo in Cass, but their gimmick would naturally be a heel thing if they weren't so, like, uh, charismatic Goofy. about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like she does likeable. the same thing without the personality. So it's like, and ugh. she's not likable. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a better move for her character. Um, so next. What was it? Uh, it was a segment between Randy Orton. He comes out to talk, talk about SummerSlam. And um, yeah, I'm okay. And, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> we, this is not the end between me and Brock Lesnar. And then uh, Bray Wyatt. Lights go out. <laughs> yeah. So Bray Wyatt comes out. What is it? Takes he, a seat. Yeah, he takes a seat. And he says whatever. He says, you know, same old Bray Wyatt, Wyatt talk. <laughs> yeah. So this is just basically letting us know that. Setting up for, yeah. Yeah, they will be the next feud. And uh, we see at the end there's a, there, there's an empty rocking chair. So, ooh, spooky. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Like he, to he totally didn't leave when the lights went completely off and, yeah i was wondering <laughs> about that like because you can see that stuff pretty clearly when you're in the audience that's what i was thinking when it happened like so it's like does like he, at, did he just run and he just dive under off. the ring because i'm thinking like <laughs> what's the shortest route out of that position like he could run and go 
past the ramp off to the side behind him or he can run and dive under the ring but i was just thinking about that logistically but whatever i think it was like it was long enough for him to like run off to i guess so like like reg run down the ramp and yeah yeah (laughs) so um next was american alpha versus breezango or febreze for the (laughs) for the senti (laughs) <laughs> yeah, for the SmackDown Championship Tournament. Obviously, American Alpha. Obviously, American obviously. Alpha <laughs> wins because they're the ones who are, who basically been uh, outlined as the next champions. So, um, we see that result, which was obvious. Uh, then next is the match they set up earlier, AJ versus Dolph Ziggler. And I think... It was an entertaining this, match. Yeah, it was a good match. It was, uh, I guess, it was kind of supposed to be a little bit of rehab for Ziggler, although it still ends with uh, Ziggler losing. Despite the K of Colonel Sanders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it still ends up with Ziggler losing, and he does not have his uh, chance at a title rematch, which there's no reason he needed to have a rematch because he lost clean the first time. Exactly. So uh, AJ puts him away. So we know it's going to be a one-on-one uh, between AJ Styles and Dolph Z- and Dean Ambrose at Backlash. So it was a real nice uh, little mid-air kick uh, from um, from Ziggler mm-hmm. to uh, to AJ when he was uh, when he was jumping off the ropes. That that was yeah. really cool simultaneous. Yeah. I always like those moves because it's like the timing has to be just right. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I admire them for doing that. Ambrose was uh, doing commentary, very entertaining doing commentary. Yeah, and uh, some of Ambrose that. stuff before because I, I skip past this stuff, but his stuff like uh, I'm talking about the being vague, at they the were casino. At the, they were, yeah, they were at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And he had the, like, yeah. the big hat. <laughs> yeah. So like he was tipping the waitress like, yo, chaps got to be generous. <laughs> he had to tip, <laughs> tip extra chips. Uh, so I think Ambrose stuff was good on the show and overall I think um, as with most weeks I feel like Smackdown uh, was the better show for me it was more entertaining and since they are determining the fate of two different championships there's obviously were more stakes uh, during this show Um, Mm -hmm. oddly enough Raw had the same situation where they had to uh, basically have a tournament for a champion but that was completely by accident so i think that uh smackdown was a show that i, I was more excited about the, at the end of it and uh going forward because we're gonna see more matches just, in this tournament i just think that smackdown like the way that things are kind of like you know falling into place is just turning into just a more entertaining show and i'm I, and i'm not just saying that just because it's two hours i'm saying mm-hmm. that because I mean, with with on the women's side and with with Ambrose, the, Ambrose there, and with uh, you know AJ Styles, and yeah. it's, it's just a more it, they're just more entertaining wrestlers, yeah, more and entertaining that, matches. Yeah, and that's the weird thing is that they have like the two biggest stars in the women's division on Raw, but they really don't have anyone else. And <laughs> SmackDown basically has like a decent was well, six people, but it's a decent women's division. Um, that they could have multiple matches on a show. Yeah, it's and, tighter. Yeah, this little six, it's it's smaller and tighter. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like on Raw, they had Sasha Banks and Charlotte, and now they have Bailey, but they don't have Sasha Banks uh, <laughs> due to injury. So it's like they're they're lacking something on their side. So I feel like they might need even more call ups. But I feel like they, Paige, they wouldn't do did that Paige necessarily. Get, did Paige get mm-hmm. drafted by Raw or by SmackDown? You remember? I'm pretty sure she was on Raw because that was one of the big things before the suspension. Because yeah. they separated them for no reason, really. Um, because it do, didn't really matter what Del Rio was. He was going to be a non-factor on whatever show. Yeah, so, they're saying that he may, uh, he may be done with the WWE. I think it's highly likely because he left on bad terms to begin with and then they they got back into good graces with each other and brought him back to basically do nothing so it was like there's no reason for this return really so i could easily see him not coming back so yeah so i think that uh that that's the most likely outcome that he's gone hopefully Paige comes back but 
I don't know. Um, I like Paige. Yeah, I like her a lot, uh, and I like AJ Lee a lot. But it seems like sometimes WWE doesn't mind cu- uh, cutting the ropes and burning their bridges. Mm-hmm. And so, I guess we'll find out. Um, yeah. So, so what's what's the next? The next pay per view is is it Backlash? The, the SmackDown. I think so. Yeah, the okay. SmackDown branded pay per views Backlash. So that card is starting to come together. I think. Uh, I think there's still a few weeks to go before it happens, mm-hmm. but yeah, they're starting to put the pieces together. There's going to obviously be the finals for the tag team tournament. There's going to be the women's match. It was a six pack challenge. They announced for the women's championship. And we know there's going to be Ambrose versus styles. So already, cool. already right there, it's, it's shaping up to be, an exciting pay-per-view hopefully it's just standard uh i guess three hour pay-per-view although these hopefully. although these network only pay-per-views might end up being shorter and i would appreciate that like to have a, a two-hour pay-per-view where it's just wall-to-wall matches would be good but we'll see because i feel like there's less stakes on the if it's not on like pay-per-view pay-per-view for it to be three hours they can do kind of mm-hmm. whatever they want and use whatever amount of time they need mm-hmm. instead of filling up unnecessary time but we'll see i like the styles of ambrose matchup you got two pretty uh pretty uh, crazy personalities there yeah. like uh, ambrose can't get into his head the same way he did with ziggler yeah, so and, I, I I think, think, yeah and i think it's going to be interesting just to see how their uh, how their wrestling styles their styles each match other. up yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that'd be really interesting because that's what one thing that uh, I think JBL said on commentary in the past is that uh, st- styles make matchups kind of like like differences in styles make interesting matchups basically because he's a little shorter. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm excited about that, and for this next week of wrestling, SmackDown is the show I'm looking forward to, and um, you know too. Raw's there too. Uh, <laughs> Stuff but, happens on Raw. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna be checking that out, and I'm gonna try to check out some NXT this week, but we'll see how that goes, because you know my my wrestling diet it only consists of so much. I was watching some of Impact Wrestling. Okay. On, uh, <laughs> okay. How pop. how was that? Yeah. It was like some of the it was like the female uh, like like wrestlers and mm-hmm. and the it, knockouts. It, it was, the, the the knockouts as they call them. Yeah, and it, it was a it was pretty uh pretty interesting all right not, not much i can say <laughs> but yeah and that was the impact report for yes, the exactly. frustrated wrestling fan yeah yeah so maybe you're welcome maybe you can check back in next week with another impact report and let us Remember, know what's uh, going five on. second impact oh no problem yeah no problem very extensive i and it's weird because the impact had probably one of the most uh talked about uh wrestling uh, segments in recent memory with their like final deletion thing with uh, the Hardys going against each other and I still have not seen that and, but that was the thing that people who hadn't even watched Impact Wrestling were talking about on social media so I still need to check that out and I need to be a better wrestling fan because I say I love wrestling but yeah, I stick strictly so to WWE but the, the, you yeah. love WWE wrestling yeah but it's like I do enjoy wrestling. Actually, there was a freelance wrestling show that uh, streamed live this past Friday, and they sh- uh, they usually stream their shows live on YouTube, and I still need to check that out. But, uh, yeah, I think that's really it for our week of wrestling. Uh, was there anything else you uh, wanted to touch on? Uh, no, except for, uh, you know, we, uh, we always uh, promise that we're going to be a uh, back every week and we are we yeah. uh, you know you may call our our style you know cowardly or safe but <laughs> yeah. you know you, you stay in the game it keeps you in the game what can i say see that's uh, that's another thing we didn't talk about like <laughs> the miz on uh talking smack was excellent and i just think that was like, best that, promo in years yeah that was the thing that was talked about probably the most out of this week was um miz on talking smack just to quickly recap it it's funny that um, 
Miz came out to see what Daniel Bryan's problem was with him. He wasn't booked on SmackDown and that he was really upset about that. He's supposed to be a, the marquee champion on the show. And like how Bryan was just basically saying that he doesn't like the way he wrestles. He feels like he wrestles like a coward. And like Miz's retort, I just thought was firing. Yeah, it was really great. It was like that's I, why it was hard to tell if it was just you know. It felt real. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, like you're calling me a coward. I wrestled the way I wrestle so that I can do it day in and day out for ten years without getting injured. Like I, like I wrestle like a coward. You're the one who won't come back to the ring. You keep <laughs> complaining about not being clear to wrestle. Why don't you go wrestle in some bingo hall if you would, if you're really not a coward and you want to wrestle someone? <laughs> and I, I just thought that was like, wow. Like yeah. it obviously was. It was detailed enough to be like, okay, this is probably scripted because there's a lot of detail in it but like it was so emo- so much emotion that he put into yeah. it and so much fire and it was like sometimes Renee the, uh, the 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 interviewer or yeah. the, the whole saying that this isn't what the show is about even yeah. though the show is called talking smack <laughs> yeah and the, he was talking smack to the extreme it was, so <laughs> it was like it felt really real and I like I, f- I really hope they follow up on that and really give Miz a spotlight going forward because I feel like I want him to be in title contention because he's kind of been on this uh mid card scene for so yeah, long for and while. he's always deserved more like he had that chance to be the uh top champion in main event at wrestlemania that one year but then he's been pretty much close to the bottom ever since then but he's been doing so much good work the entire he's been time. acting you know guys a little yeah. director dvd movie career yeah like but it's like just on the show like he's been doing the best work of pretty much anyone on the show like as far as character work mic work uh, he always yeah. builds interest during his talk show segment which can be death for a lot of other people but like he's doing great work and i just want to see him acknowledged for that because like he really deserves it I think that people gained a lot of respect from this past week, me included. Yeah. So I really hope they follow up on that. And yeah, so that was the highlight of the week, really. Even like some, including SummerSlam and Raw and everything else, that that segment from The Miz was like, that was exciting. That was kind of like his pipe bomb moment. It was like, oh, okay, they're, hopefully they're going somewhere with this. Do you think that like, like I, I hope that Daniel Bryan can at least make one more return to the ring. I, I don't know how bad like his concussion and his brain injury issues are, but I I, 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 I've been reading stuff that like, like the reason why the WWE won't let him wrestle again and, and put him in this position as SmackDown general managers is because they don't want another Chris Benoit situation. Yeah. Where, yeah, the Chris it, Benoit it, thing was really, Benoit. It, it was really a, a black mark on on their he was an active wellness policy yeah yeah it was a black mark on their wellness policy as far as the the, how their doctors evaluate people and their concussion policy so they really don't want anything like that or just with everybody worried about concussions and brain injuries in general in all the sports they don't want to be seen as the irresponsible uh party so i feel like if he's ever going to wrestle again, it won't be with the WWE. And I re- like as much as I enjoy seeing him wrestle, and it was really exciting. Like I just don't think it should be worth Any it for him term, to go back. Yeah, brain and, damage. Yeah, come on. Because like you can have great matches, but really, like is <laughs> one or two additional great matches worth possibly the uh, never wrestling again or or having some kind of life ending brain injury so it was like I want good matches from Daniel Bryan but I'll have to just go back and watch them on the WWE Network <laughs> nice plug yeah for nine ninety nine. free trial <laughs> yeah so anyway I think that's it for our show so you want to give out your information for how people can reach out to you on social media sure my Twitter handle is at Anthony Hoffman you can find me on Facebook Anthony Hoffman as well uh, my Instagram uh, handle thingy is uh, at Tony Hoffman Chai C H I, and I'm on Twitter at Zach from Chicago. 
That's Z-A-C from Chicago. You can follow this podcast on Twitter at Frustrated Grad. And um, we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash Frustrated Grads. And I'm also on uh, YouTube myself, youtube.com slash Zach Hughes. That's Z-A-C Hughes. All right. So that's it for this episode of the Frustrated Wrestling Fan. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And that's all you get for today. This period of time when this coleslaw and mashed potatoes and gravy, yeah, feel good. Yeah, so I guess, and apparently this isn't the end of this thing. There's oh, it's an ongoing. Yeah, from what series. I heard, they like like at the next pay per views there will be more of these little uh, vignettes, and I I can't wait. <sighs> You're a sponsor. Yeah. yeah, are you more of a Popeyes guy or a, you know? I never really liked any Chick Fil A. I never really liked any of the mainstream chicken places. I was always more of a Harold's person because like the Harold's, the Harold's yeah. man. But that's the thing is like I used to love KFC as a kid because it was sure. right it was right around the corner from me, and I could walk there. Like I I, I was one of those kids Mine was who like saved a couple them. of blocks. Yeah, I was one of those kids who saved up my allowance, so I would just buy whatever I wanted when I wanted. So, like, on Friday nights, I would go and get, like, the 20-piece box of... 20-piece box, obviously. Yes, for myself. Uh, (laughs) 20-piece box of... Were you morbidly obese? (laughs) No, they were actually the little, but they were, like, the honey barbecue wings. So, they were, like... The boneless ones? No, they were... I think most of the time I got the ones with bones, but they were, like so sauced up and extra sticky and i just Mm. loved them so i would get 20 of those and i would get one of their little uh i don't know if they have individual side uh no i would get one of those little chocolate cakes (laughs) with the white oh yeah (laughs) and i would (laughs) i would eat all the wings and i would eat that entire cake by myself big chunk of sugar yeah and it was usually while i was watching snick on Nickelodeon. <laughs> Roundhouse. It was, it was like my routine. I would watch like Are You Afraid that. of the Dark and all that and Goosebumps or whatever. Oh, those were the days. Yeah. So, like, I loved KFC, but then that ended up being like the first place I ever worked at that exact KFC. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can relate to how so, you end up working at a place yeah. that you like and then that ter- totally changes your uh, opinion yeah. on it. So yeah. then you you learn how the sausage is made and you don't. Yeah, exactly. Go behind the curtain. <laughs> you don't want sausage ever again. Actually, the weird thing is that I didn't learn anything that was really discouraging about the chicken. Like, I would still eat KFC chicken. I just had an aversion to the place. Like, I didn't like the memories I had going into the no. building. But yeah manager yeah stupid employee it was weird the manager was like a family friend but then it was like no you're no friend of mine <laughs> this is, like <laughs> i, I, I quit on him after six months i was like hey fuck you <laughs> i'm out of here <laughs> tired of washing these dishes take this drumstick and shove it yeah so like the the one bad thing i learned and hopefully this doesn't get me sued but <laughs> i will say at this Don't particular work. uh branch <laughs> And I'm not even going to say the name anymore because you know where I'm talking about. But at this particular branch, when they made the pot pies, it was basically they made the pot pies at the end of the day and they just tore up the chicken that didn't sell that day by hand. And then they made the pot pies for the next Ooh. day. So I'm like, I was, I'm not a pot pie Person, neither am i i've never had but this. i was like oh never i'm wanted. i'm never gonna get that, <laughs> that pop out from that franchise but anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> on that note yeah so 
You go to the next uh, yes. match at SummerSlam. So what do we have? <laughs> next was uh, Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. I, yeah, uh, once again, uh, Mr. Rollins uh, injures a uh, yeah. another wrestler. He's, he's it, gaining a bit of a reputation. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad look. It was like I feel it bad. Is. I feel bad for both the guys actually. Like yeah. Finn Balor, he wins his first major championship. It was like a huge. Um, Move. Just got drafted about like what yeah. over a month ago. <laughs> like he's in, he was in the middle of a ginormous push, maybe one of the biggest of any. I'm not like most people who take what they're given like a plastic little person. Rapadoo! <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frustrated Grad Podcast. And this is episode three of the Frustrated Wrestling Fan. I'm Zach Hughes. And I'm Here's my co-host, writer, movie fan, wrestling fan, Tony Hoffman. Hey, how's it going, guys? Zach, Yo, how's your week been? It's been all right. Uh, it was full of more wrestling than I could have anticipated, but I, I think <laughs> but I you, survived. You love wrestling. There's never enough wrestling. I love slash hate wrestling, <laughs> but I guess that's what makes me a frustrated wrestling fan. Bipolar wrestling. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see where should we start uh the biggest show that kicked off the beginning of last week for us is uh SummerSlam, right yeah SummerSlam. yeah the big what four plus hour extravaganza in, yeah in that's Brooklyn. that's just too much to me i i i'll say it right now i did not watch all of that the, that kickoff show sorry maybe i'll see the highlights later but no. i had to uh had to just show up for the main event i mean more than the main event but the main show at least sure it was it was like the uh, tag team uh match or something that happened during the pre-show that which i also didn't see but yeah this. there was a big tag team match where i guess uh the usos vault villains and hype bros were on one team and the american alpha breezango and the ascension uh I guess we're on the other side. I don't know. I didn't see it, but I hear it sounds it like it was but... good. <laughs> the big multi-man tag matches are usually good on those shows. Uh, the it, funny thing to me is that this thing they made a big deal of on Raw, Sheamus and uh, Cesaro having a best of seven series that was going to start at SummerSlam. It was pushed to the pre-show, so they're already <laughs> establishing that it doesn't matter, and it's just to fill time. No, no. Even that, that's just them admitting that that it doesn't matter, that nobody cares. That yeah, so it's like they had it before them. Like, okay, match number two will happen whenever <laughs> the whole series could be over for all we know, and we've never seen one match. Um, so yeah, Sheamus won the first one, whatever, and you know they're just I'll take your word back for it. and forth. <laughs> uh, Sami Zayn and Neville defeated the Dudley Boys, and uh, whatever. Okay, so uh, yeah, Dudley Boys, uh, pretty much their last uh, significant match, I or their probably their last match. Maybe I have a, an opinion on that when we get to Raw. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Uh, the show starts out, I believe, with Natalia, Alexa Bliss, and the returning Nikki Bella versus which uh, everyone knew was gonna yeah happen. everybody knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Even though she was on the she was on the bad guy team, she got the biggest ovation of the match. That's um, like th that's such a like a like a whitewashing of like how everybody felt about her like before she got injured and stuff because yeah. she pretty, pretty much hated her and now she's yeah. back from this injury now not everybody likes her you know that's the thing that happens when you come back from an injury you're like showing that real life overcoming adversity it usually turns people baby face yeah i, I applaud her for that yeah, yeah i was i was happy that she, she came back nice and healthy her you know career was kind of in jeopardy a little bit there and she worked hard and got back so yeah. i'm good to have her i'm good she's back yeah so their team beat uh, Carmella, Becky Lynch, and Naomi. So that match was what it was. Show starter, curtain jerker, as they say. Her neck is good. Yeah. So uh, after that was, I don't know if these were in order, but Charlotte and uh, Sasha Banks debuting wrestler in WWE. Yeah, I was trying to like remember, like who would you compare it to? Like Cena? Would Cena yeah. have to like? 
I mean, really, this isn't a move they pull in WWE that often. I would think of like way back to like in WCW where like the big show as we know him now, the giant fought Hulk Hogan in his first match and won the world title. Like that's how far back I had to go to be like somebody in kind of their debut. He won obviously a qualifying match, but this is like his first pay-per-view match on the main roster. He wins the like the title that's supposed to be the major title on Raw. It was like a huge deal. So it's it's really unfortunate that he got injured in that same match. And you look at like how he got injured, like, you know, he pretty much got picked up by Rollins and he threw him up against the barrier. Yeah, it's just like a running power bomb. Yeah. That he usually does in the corner. Yeah. It looks like he like it's it's a hard move to take, I'm sure, because like you're getting thrown in the air and i guess he was he didn't exactly know where he was so he probably put his arm back too far to stop himself um but he popped his shoulder out of the socket and i like how they talked about it on commentary the next night like they did a, a replay of it it was like if you notice right here he pops his shoulder back into place like they still wanted to make sure you knew that this guy was a badass that he popped his shoulder back into place and finished the match yeah so uh, that, that was a nice that. thing that they spotlighted on the commentary the next night but he finished the match they had they went on to have a great match you wouldn't be able to tell from watching the no. match i don't think that his uh shoulder was messed up apparently found out more later that it started hurting more yeah had his arm in the sling on raw the next night yeah um so so we know he wins the match so i like that match i just wish that it, it, what happened didn't happen during it and another match uh where i regret what happened <laughs> uh during the course of the match was the following one brock lesnar <laughs> versus randy orton so i thought this match so, was yeah. I, I i wasn't excited about the wrestling in this match because um like we were talking about before the show i feel like i've turned a corner on brock lesnar as far as how i feel about his wrestling ability because people are excited for brock lesnar matches but not in the same way they're excited for like an aj styles match or a john cena no, match you're not gonna watch any like cool moves or any like good yeah you know technique or anything because we know the formula basically has been put in place from that uh john cena match at a couple summer slams ago where he just basically suplexed john cena the entire match and then f5 him. that is now the formula for a brock lesnar match it, it's a freak show basically. yeah it's so so that's show. what people were anticipating and another thing people are anticipating is like okay they're making randy orton look like a big deal so from podcasts i heard uh, a lot of people were looking forward to uh, the spot where Randy Orton hits the RKO out of nowhere. And the, the one of the obvious ones was that he would reverse the F5 into an RKO mid-move. And I was like, okay, if I see that move, then I'll be satisfied. We did not get that move. What we no. got, what we got was uh, a little bit of back and forth. They went to the outside. He gets the RKO on the out on. The, uh, on the announce table comes in ddt's him uh with for a good near fall it's another rko and then um the unthinkable happens uh brock is pretty much on top of him pounding and then i guess they decided as far as the bookers work uh the next match was probably the first one on the whole show that i was like anticipating um was aj styles versus john cena yeah even though we've seen it before but uh aj won with with not so clean a finish the first time i'm glad that they got like a longer match they got to do more a lot of people don't like like the finisher kickouts and make the finishers look weak but i thought they did a good balance of that i liked how like uh cena just felt like he couldn't put him away you could see the like uh expressions on his face every time he would kick out yeah so i thought that was cool and i like that yeah. aj got a good clean win over him yeah. and uh john cena is now a part-time wrestler he's yeah. got uh, other commitments now and uh, yeah, yeah he's gonna still... go film american grit on fox <laughs> american because grit. It, 
Netflix. It was such a smash hit the first season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Time for new blood. Yeah, totally. Um, next was Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. This one this was I w- the. This is like the I would say like the only one I saw from start to finish. Really, so yeah. that one for me it was one that I wasn't really anticipating. I knew it was going to be a good match, but just like with the build up and them trying to make Ziggler look credible, it was like I know that how this is going to end. I can <laughs> see this from a mile away, so just to get it over with. But for that one, I think it was interesting because usually the way uh, matches go in WWE is that when they because these are pretty much a, uh, two baby faces facing each other. But usually, like, whoever's taking the more heel stance, if they're, like, getting extra cocky about it and extra confident, then they're going to lose. But it was interesting that Dean Ambrose basically was mocking Ziggler the entire match. <laughs> and he just put him away and won. <laughs> so it was funny, like... It feels like a legit burial of Ziggler, but I'm sure he's going to be doing. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to be doing something else. But I'm, I mean, he got another opportunity, you know, in Raw, which we're going to talk about. But you know, oh, yeah, SmackDown actually. Yeah, you on, know, yeah, I'm talking SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, so it's it, be. I don't know what's going to happen now. I don't know, and and also we talked about this before we started recording, but okay we saw this commercial i think it was before this match um but there was this commercial for kfc (laughs) and i really didn't know what i was watching when it it came on the screen like okay so there's dolph ziggler dressed as colonel sanders big muscly uh yeah colonel sanders muscly red colonel sanders he obviously Uh, doesn't eat kfc yeah He's taking on The Miz, who's dressed as a chicken. Um, so San Diego chicken-esque. Yeah, so basically like a takeoff of the chicken fight from Family Guy, but in a wrestling ring, all uh, to promote KFC chicken. And I, I didn't know what I was seeing. I was like, this guy, you want to be believed as a top contender for your main championship? <laughs> is in a commercial dressed as Colonel Sanders and another guy who's trying to get over as a serious heel and as a top guy on SmackDown with the Intercontinental Championship is dressed as a chicken. (laughs) So (laughs) just really didn't know why this existed and like what was the upside of it? I guess money is yes, as uh, usual that's exactly the the upside. upside, Product placement, uh, KFC. You know, I I assume that the large portion of the wwe fandom uh, each there certainly yeah. not the wrestlers yeah there was, i'm sure there were some greasy fingers turning up the volume uh, at this <laughs> i think fought for the women's championship and charlotte won surprisingly enough uh, yeah i wasn't expecting that i i think that we were we most like everybody else uh, thought that Sasha was gonna uh, win to you know keep you know her keep the belt the women's uh, title belt but uh, yeah. like I think like right before I think it might have been right before SummerSlam like word had got out that Sasha had been removed from the schedule the, yeah. uh, the WWE schedule for like the next month and people yeah. were assuming oh she's about to get suspended yeah because there have been so many stuff. suspensions like oh is there just another one to add to the list. <laughs> But apparently it's for uh, recovering from injuries, right? Yeah, like a little, little, little nagging stuff to give her some time to to recover. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, Charlotte has the the belt back. Um, you know, it, it was mentioned on uh, what on Raw the next day that uh, when Sasha comes back, she's gonna have a chance to. It's gonna be a rematch to to get the belt back. So yeah, so. <laughs> so that was uh, that match. Uh, next was Gallows and Anderson. Uh, they they technically beat the New Day by disqualification. It was pretty much a no contest. Uh, they match, didn't have yeah. Biggie. Yeah, they didn't have Biggie, and then uh, the fight really gets out of hand, and Biggie comes out uh, for the save. And everybody's happy he was finally back. So that one's basically a no contest. Uh, the Miz and Apollo Crews 
um, fought for the IC championship. I don't remember this match much at all. I, I don't either. In and out, but Miz <laughs> won. Obviously, I didn't expect Apollo Cruz to uh, win this one because I think Miz because he's is boring as fuck. Yeah, Miz <laughs> is uh, on a roll right now, and we'll talk about that when we get to SmackDown. <laughs> but I'm glad he held on to it. I am. Um, Jericho. Um, beat Enzo and Cass in a decision I don't understand because Enzo and Cass I would assume are like top contenders for the tag championship mm. and they're I, I don't more know why they're losing more right entertaining. now yeah so I don't understand why they're losing right now and I don't even understand why uh, Kevin Owens is being wasted in this tag team right now but he Whatever. seems. I would like to see him solo. I would like to see him be a contender for, uh, you know, for, for the for the heavyweight title. Yeah, and we're gonna see him fight for the title coming up was next uh, week. So uh, hopefully they decide to go a different way with that team. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ruth, I, I just like I just like how unconventional he is. Yeah, like, like physic physically as a wrestler. Totally. Yeah. So uh, Rusev and Roman Reigns fought for the. IC championship it never happened it basically was no contest also kind of trying to get uh Roman Reigns over as his badass so it's basically just beat up Rusev match didn't even start I was like I, I was reading something uh, somebody that I follow on Twitter uh like do you think that like Rusev like he has too much of a baby face to be like a heel like they are they're, they're obviously Absolutely. always trying to I mean, yeah, cause I, I don't buy him as being. Like, I think, <laughs> I think in front of a crowd, like when he's doing his promo, it he gets over as a heel because he's he's good at doing that anti-American, anti-American act. So they'll they'll get into the USA chance or whatever. But like his like his character outside of that and all the stuff that went on like with Lana and when he was with Summer Rae for that brief period of time. Yeah, I think yeah. that really got him over as a face. Like He's too they, nice of a guy. <laughs> they, re- they realized how funny he was so I think that was that worked against his heel persona because I don't think anybody was really like, yeah, Roman, I want you to beat him. So this was kind of just a uh, time waster. Um, 